As I was approaching the clothing store, I had no idea who was gonna be on the other end. It could be anybody, considering there's a ton of fashionistas in Hollywood. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Hi, oh, how are you? Great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh my, my name's Brad Goreski, and I am a celebrity stylist. I also appear on E! Live from the red carpet. I, of course, heard about Tyler from his show, Hollywood Medium. I love watching it. I'm so excited to hear about what comes through today. I, I love what you do, and I love how you affect people. I'm excited for today. I have a lot coming through already, um, but I see you have some objects, which is super helpful. I am going to hold on to this one. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. Awesome. OK. We'll see what happens. So, give me one sec. There's definitely somebody that has passed on who was the person who shaped who I am. I would be so happy to hear from this person. Grandma, grandma. Well, interesting. They just keep having me bring up grandma, grandma, grandma. <laughs> As I'm connecting with this energy, she's having me acknowledge her duration of life. Do you have a grandmother that's passed? Yes. OK, was that someone you were hoping to hear from today? Yes. Gotcha. And are there any objects here that aren't for her? Uh-uh. OK. They're all grandma. My grandmother definitely made me feel not alone and made me feel safe. Fourth or fifth grade, she asked me what I wanted to be, and I told her I wanted to be a makeup artist or a window dresser. Like, I mean, <laughs> hello. And she said, be a makeup artist, they make more money. <laughs> Do you ever remember her having any issues with the lungs? Any issues with respiration, breathing? Just bring me there. Yes. It's weird. I'm wondering if what she went through, if a doctor thought that what this was initially was something else. It's one of those things where it's like, they're bringing me the lungs. I was told, oh, hey, it's what that looks like that, but oh, it's something much smaller. It's not a big deal. She was uh, misdiagnosed. And so they were telling her to take, like, Advil mm -hmm. for what was very quickly growing cancer. Gotcha. Which had started in her lungs and then spread through. We were given the information too late. Wow, I'm so sorry. It is so hard to get something like that. I can't even imagine. How old was your grandma-ish when she passed? She was 75 years old. From her perspective, despite the fact that this was, by the family standards, too young to go, she felt like it was okay to go when she did. I think we all wished that we had had the opportunity and the information for us to be able to do anything to help her. That, like, literally right out of the gate was one of the first messages. I'm okay with my duration of life. I'm okay with my duration. It's like, I understand the situation. It is what it is. And there's an acknowledgement of that. I think we put our own terms on other people, especially when it comes to death, and we don't take into account that maybe everything was perfect the way that it was. I want you to look into this family-wise. They're bringing up a situation where, you're gonna have to look into this, where a little boy was dressed up as a little girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and but they're joking about it. There's a funniness around it. So it's kind of weird. Do you know of any family stories where- It's me. I would get into my grandma's clothes or my mom's right. clothes and yeah. just like prance around the house. And did they ever see it? All the time. And was there a funniness around it? Like, yeah, ah, they loved ah. it. Yeah, yeah, like an acceptance. Kind totally. Of like, within that message, I think there's a deeper understanding of who you are mm -hmm. and a pride about who you are. Mm -hmm. And she has that, and she's your number one fan. She was always the one, like, if anybody said anything, like, she would just be like, knock it off. She was a very big champion who made me feel, no matter who I was or what I was, that is exactly the way it should be. I was bullied in school. I would know where the people where I was, I needed to stay away from, and then the people where I could go and do my thing. That and then sense. luckily on the other end of that, have like a safe place at home where right. I could be with my grandma. Absolutely, no, for sure, it's so important. <laughs> my grandmother always let me play with Barbie. She taught me how to bake. She was very progressive. She was very loving and uh, she was just great. I mean, growing up, I dealt with a ton of bullying myself and I, you know, you're totally right when you spoke on that, I could relate. I was bullied because it was medium, bullied because I was gay, um, but I was actually bullied more for being a medium. 
wow. than anything. Um, but I think you know, being gay was something that people had, had kind of heard of you know, at, at my age. Uh, they hadn't heard of mediums. Did your mom encourage your homosexuality and you being a medium as well? It's interesting. My mom was a lot more supportive of the medium thing. When people ask, Tyler, when did you come out? I always say, I came out about 20 times. Because I'd be like, Mom, I'm gay. She's like, no, you're not. Mom, I'm gay. No, you're not. Give it, really think about it. So it was my life. Um, but as a medium, she was, I was able to demonstrate it uh, for her. I was able to connect to her loved ones right. and read her friends. And so she kind of understood it. but. I, she never was really able to understand the gay thing until she realized it wasn't a phase and she showed the interest. And I think when people know better, they do better. And my family was really a testament to that. So my mom and my dad eventually were incredibly accepting and they live with me now and we're really close. That's so I'm awesome. really blessed to have good parents. When I came out to my mom, you know what she said? What'd she say? I said, Mom, I, I'm gay. And she said, I know. Oh, well, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. that, that was like it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, to have that unconditional love is just so important. Very. Absolutely. I'm very lucky that way. Yeah. The bullying for me when I was a kid was hard, but my grandma's attitude always with other people uh, was basically F them. Like, truly. Like, my grandmother was one of those people who is just like, if they don't like it, it's them. All right, so I love photo. I just would love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right, let's see. Oh. My grandma's name was Ruby. Fabulous. <laughs> That's the only picture I have of me and my grandmother together really? that I found. She hated having her picture taken. She begrudgingly gave me that, <laughs> that picture together, but it sits on my desk and I cherish it. It was more than I hoped it would be. What he does really impacts and transforms people. I just love him, period. I think I, I actually could have sat and just like had dinner with him and chatted with him. I feel like we are kindred on many levels. I honestly wanted to do this for fun because it's fun, but I think the reverberations from this will be more impactful than I could have imagined. Bye! -bye. Bye. <laughs> it was good, it was really good. Only one person came through and it was the one person he brought all his objects yeah. for, so that was really, <laughs> yeah.